This is part two of my spiccato tutorial. We're talking about the four bow factors that we need to be aware of when we play off the string. You ready for this? It's violin time. Hi, I'm Lin Kuo and I'm founder of Violin with Dr. Lin. This is part two of my spiccato tutorial and we're going to talk about the four bow factors that we need to know when we play off the string. Now, if you haven't done so, don't forget to like my channel and click the notification bell because you don't want to miss part three and four which are coming in the future and I'm going to be talking about the five, five common mistakes I see with spiccato and people playing off the string and how we can fix them. Okay, so today we're talking about four bow factors that I have to remind my students about when they're learning to play off the string. So the first thing we have to consider is that we have to learn the properties of our bow. It's like learning about anything that has a bounce, whether you're, you're taking a ball and you're bouncing it on the ground, whether it's a little ping pong ball, it's a rubber ball, it's a soccer ball or a basketball. Each of these balls has a very different bouncing property and every bow has a different bouncing property. We have to understand that each bow has a different balance point, has a different weight distribution, and will feel different in everyone's hand. So for that reason, we must get very intimate and very comfortable with how our bow behaves and reacts. For example, this bow that I have now is not as bouncy as my previous bow. This one I had to learn how to play off the string with, and this one likes to be stroked more horizontally than bouncing very vertically. So this takes me to the four bow properties that we have to think about when we play spiccato. The first bow property that we have to think about is where in the bow is the great greatest bounce on your stick. You have to consider that there's the balance point, there's the tip, there's the frog, there's the middle, there's what Burton Kaplan calls tip two. Now, what I like to think about is what I call the middle zone. So often I see people playing in the wrong part of the bow. The best part of the bow that will bounce is what I call the middle zone. So find the middle, the place that has the most give between the stick and the hair and start about there. So whether you want to go um, take the approach of from the air approach or from the string approach. If you don't remember what these approaches are, go visit my first part of the uh, spiccato tutorial, part one, where I talk about these two approaches. So if we were going to take from the air approach, I'm gonna find the middle of my bow and from the air, just try the saucer, saucer stroke. Now, oftentimes I see people try and play too low or too high. Now bear in mind that each of these parts of the bow will have a different sound. This is quite percussive and quite dry. Here is a bit more body. You will hear that each part of the bow has a different sound, but in general, you will be safe being in the middle zone. So the first property is where in the bow that you are. Now, what you can do is experiment within the middle zone, or if you want, you can start near the frog. You can start with your saucer stroke. So this sounds like a brush. As we take this further up the bow, you hear how the stroke changes. We're not changing the tempo. We're not changing anything else. But you can hear that the stroke gets a little drier and more percussive as you get to the tip. So you, if you wanted that kind of stroke, you know where to be. If you want a drier stroke, you stay closer to the tip. But in general, you want to be in the middle zone. Now, when we talk about the middle zone, we know that if you want a slower spiccato, I would recommend you stay near the lower part of your middle zone. If you want a faster stroke, let's say more of a socia, I would go a little bit higher in the stroke. So if we're doing, um, so I'm in the middle, but if I were doing a socia stroke, let's see, if I wanted to do, I moved just a bit further up the stroke. I was here for the first stroke and maybe about there for the faster stroke. So where in the bow is very important. The second property of the bow that we need to consider for off the string strokes is the height 
of the bounce. So in general, the slower your off the string strokes, the higher your bounce will be. The faster the stroke your spiccato is, the lower your bounce is going to be. So a, a slower spiccato, let's say, if we review what we talked about in part one of my spiccato tutorial, if we played a quarter note equals 50, you see the distance that the hair of the bow stick travels. I can afford to come off the string quite high. Now, that distance is about that high. Now, if I wanted to play a little faster, the height has to come down a little lower. If I get faster, the height gets a little, a little bit closer. The distance gets a little closer until it gets closer and closer as you go faster until practically it's not leaving the string at all. So it's very similar to when you are hitting, let's say, a sticks on a drum. The slower the stroke, guck, 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 your sticks can travel higher off the surface of the drum. And once you get closer and closer and closer to the, um, the, the drum head, your stroke or your, let's say, your sticks uh, um, rebounding off the surface of a drum will get closer and closer and closer. It's the same with a ball. If you're bouncing a ball off the ground, a basketball, a slow dribble will be quite high off the ground. As you get closer to the ground, the dribble gets faster and faster and faster. It's the same properties. The bow is quite bouncy itself and the string of your instrument is bouncy in itself. So you're working with two rebounding properties here. So beware of the height. The slower your stroke, the higher you can be. And the faster your stroke, the lower your bow will have to remain. So that comes in very handy when you're learning Midsummer Night's Dream Scherzo by Mendelssohn. So there, there are a mixture of eighth notes, and then there are sixteenth notes, and then eighth notes. So the very, uh, a very helpful tip is to remember that try to watch the height of your stroke in the eighth notes, and then sixteenth notes are, are closer. And these will be higher. The third property of the bow when we're talking about off the string strokes is the tilt, the tilt of the bow stick. Now, this is really, really helpful because you will hear different properties come out in the sound when there is a difference in the tilt of the stick. So what they call, the, the motion is called roulet. So basically you're rolling the stick between your fingers to change the tilt of the bow stick. When, in general, when you have a flat hair, so I'm just gonna go on very flat hair. As you know, the, all of these hairs are, are under tension. The more hairs that are in contact with the string, you will have more tension and you will, you're gonna get more bounce and percussiveness. As you can hear, it's a very dry sound. Now, if I just apply roulet and just tilt the bow stick this way, you can hear the sound change. Slowly I'm tilting. There. So less of the hair on the bow is in contact with the string, and that softens the amount of rebound from the stick and the hair to the string, therefore softening the bounce and therefore giving me more of a horizontal feel. And that sounds more like a brush. So more dry when you're flat, more brush when you're tilted. So I'll try this way. Tilted. Flat. Tilted. Try this way. Tilted. It has a bit more bounce when it's flat. So if you're struggling with your stroke, and you're not sure, experiment with the tilt of the stick. You may find, in general, I find that many students are having trouble because they are too flat-haired and they lose control. Once I suggest that they tilt the, the stick, the bounce becomes a more manageable for them. The fourth bow property that we need to think about with spiccato is the contact point, where the bow is contacting the string. 
And we know that between uh, one, three, and five, well, there are five points of contact, shall we say, that we've learned from, especially from Simon Fisher. So one is near the bridge, five is near the fingerboard, three is near the middle, and two and four are in between. So in general, when you are on a lower pitch, or especially if you're on a thicker string like a G string, you're going to discover that you will need to pull, push your bow out to a further out contact point. Now, let me just try it here on a low string. Obviously, that doesn't sound so good. Now, let's try it here on an E string. I'll try a further contact point here. Now to me that's a little flabby in sound. Let me bring it closer. Okay, that's a bit too close to the bridge. I'll bring it to two or three. I'll bring this to the G string. Same contact point, two around three. It doesn't quite like it. It likes it about there, I pushed it out. Same thing when you're going up a scale, the higher the pitch, the closer the contact point will need to be towards the bridge. It may be only that much of a difference between lower on the string and higher on the string, but we do need to keep our eye where the bow is in terms of contact point. So if I were to start a scale on the G string, I would be further out on the contact point here. Now you see the contact point, I've ended it up at contact point two as opposed to five when I was down there. So that's the fourth property that we need to be aware of. So one, two, three, and four. Let me know in the comments which one you thought was the most helpful or the one that you may have neglected when you're playing spiccato. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and go ahead and share it with some friends. I have part three and part four coming and stay tuned because they're going to get really, really deep. The top five mistakes that I see people making in spiccato and how we fix them. All right, see you in the next video.